Thank you, Barb. Hello. I hope you can hear me. I don't see it popping up on the computer screen yet. Okay, here it goes. All right. Ooh, yay, someone sent in a question. Very nice, I'm excited. I'm going to officially get started in a few minutes. I'm just going to wait and see if anybody else is going to jump in there. Mm, another good one. Okay, it is officially 3.30 and I'm going to get started because I don't want the people who are already here to have to wait for anything. So I'm going to start us off with prayer because I'm not going to be in any use to anybody if we don't um, give honor to Holy Spirit. So Lord, I just come before you and first of all, I ask that you forgive me for every, he's already drawn near, I feel him. Thank you, Lord, for being so faithful. Um, thank you for just showing up and not letting me fail, Lord. I really appreciate that, man. Um, I praise you, I honor you, I glorify you, Lord. I ask that you please forgive me for every sin I've committed in word, thought, or deed since the last time I came before you. I apply the blood of Jesus over my sin and nail it to the cross of Christ. Lord, you do not take sin lightly, and I don't want to take it lightly either. And if there's anything specific that I need to bring up before you will commune with me and complete freedom today, I ask that you please bring that up so I can deal with it immediately. I want to be able to hear you clearly. I want to be able to represent you clearly, Lord. Holy Spirit, I give you complete reign to speak, use my voice, use my mind, use my spirit, speak through me and give clear and direct information. Lord, I ask that you please give me peace so that I won't be hyper and messing things up and people will be able to understand me. Lord, I praise you, I honor you, I glorify you, I thank you for your presence, I thank you for your ability to, ability, willingness to speak. I just praise you, Lord, because you love with an everlasting love. I declare this all in Jesus' name. Oh, I take authority over this area, all of our technology, all the way up to the heavenlies, and I say that this atmosphere belongs to the Most High God, the Lord God, Jehovah, Yahweh. There is none like him in all the earth. He cannot be compared to. And I say right now that the angelic hosts are surrounding all of us. We will be able to receive revelation. We'll be able to commune with each other, fellowship with each other, and commune with the Holy Spirit. And I say that the enemy will not have any place or power in this broadcast. I declare this all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good. I uh, saw some angels coming in, so that's good. We are protected, and it's awesome. All right, um, today I just wanted to do a live q and I know I don't have a private channel, so anybody who's just flipping through can get access he to here to this so if you don't want anybody to know anything about you protect yourself accordingly and we also just decree and declare that um, we are protected you know the angelic hosts are watching over us and all of our information and all of our things that we discuss will be protected by the Lord uh, this video it does get recorded but I'll also delete it within 24 hours so you don't have to worry about it you know being out on the web forever but I do want the people who are in the course who this is mainly for to be able to look at it you know before it's gone the purpose of this activity is to talk a little bit together and just kind of commune and see what you see and what you think and, and, you know, and for me to get some live feedback from you because the best way to get an interpretation from your dream is to be in communion with the Holy Spirit. And so we're just, we'll just model that and, you know, just show you how the Lord speaks and, and allow you to practice that and things like that so that you can become proficient in at least hearing from the Lord about your own life. You know, you may not be able to go out and interpret other people's dreams, but you can at least get the information that you need for your life. And that's important because God chooses dreams and visions as a means to speak to us so that we can be successful in life. He's on our side. He wants to equip us with every strategy, every tool, 
tool available so that we can walk in the fullness of the destiny he has for us. And that's our goal as ministers of the gospel. We want everybody living that abundant life that Christ promised. We don't want this, you know, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm just going to heaven and that's good enough for me. We want beyond that because Jesus said that's what he came for. That's available to us and we're going after it. And I know for my life, dreams are a huge way of getting God's information, you know, on how to live that abundant life. For example, I was called into ministry in a dream. You know, I had a dream one morning. I was woken up at like 6.02, and the Lord was saying, what does my word say? And I didn't really want to get up out of bed, you know, and do anything. So I just started, you know, while I'm going back to sleep, I just started saying scriptures that I know, you know, Proverbs 5, 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and, you know, just saying scriptures that I that I knew right off the top of my head. And then I fell back to sleep. So the very next morning at 6.02, he wakes me up again. And this time he dropped this blue screen with gold trim, gold letters all in capital. And there's this right hand pointing underneath the letters. And there's a woman standing to my left. And um, I'm reading and the hand is moving under these words. It says, read the word speak the word, speak the word. So the Lord was calling me to say, you need to be speaking my word to people. You have understanding of my word. You have knowledge of my word. You need to go out there and speak the revelation that you have so that other people can experience me in a new way. So that was my call. You know, I, I am a teacher and I teach, you know, the word of God, but I used to be a public school teacher and I always thought that that was what I was called to do because I was successful in it. But the Lord showed me later you know, that I took you through learning how to be a public school teacher, and, but I also put that gifting in you because you've had the desire since you were a child, and you are extremely successful at it. It was always easy for you, and you always had success with students because I gave you that gift to be used for me. So now I am a teacher, but I'm teaching according to his will and not just what I think, you know, to do with that gift. And those are one of the things that dreams will do for you. They'll give you that kind of information so that you are in the career and in the place that the Lord has for you. Okay, so real quickly, looking back at that dream, the Lord's voice was like, you can't really see this, the Lord's voice was like up and to my left, and his voice often, for some, whatever reason, comes that direction for me, you know, it just comes out from the left, and then the person on my left was a woman, and if you didn't know this already, that when the word wisdom is used in the, in the book of Proverbs, it's a feminine noun, and it says wisdom calls, and says she calls, and she cries out you know, for people to listen to her. Well, sometimes the person of the Holy Spirit is a woman. So she'll show up and he'll show up in your dreams as a woman. And that's because it comes out of the word of God when the, the spirit of wisdom is like a woman. And the reason for that is because wisdom births things in you. Wisdom gives you knowledge and understanding. It helps you be successful. It births success in you. It births tons of things in you. Just read through the Proverbs and you'll see that. So that's why Wisdom is considered a woman, and that's why Holy Spirit will sometimes show up in your dream as a woman. So the woman who's standing to my right was the Holy Spirit, and she was a witness to the Word of God. So other ways that God shows his witness is like in the Bible when he says, Abram, Abram, or when he says, Saul, Saul. He's calling you two times because that's a witness. He's saying, this is confirmation. This is coming from me. Pay attention, okay? So those are just some things about dreams. And I had a couple questions come in, and that's the most important reason for this is so that, you know, I can interact with you. I'm going to answer some of those questions. And thank you for saying that I look beautiful. I appreciate that. Um, the first question that I have says, what is the interpretation of an animal looking into a house through a window? Okay, this is cool. A window basically is like gives you the, the ability to see, right? So if they're looking into the house and a house is going to be considered like your soul or your life condition, big picture. If you're in the kitchen of the house, that's like your soul inside, you know, detail. Okay. So if an animal, it depends on what kind of animal it is, it's looking into your house. So basically an animal, like if it's a, if it's a, let me think of something. I can't even think of an animal. If it's something like a tiger is looking in your house through the window. So what this thing is like, there's some predatory individual, could be a demonic spirit, it could be a person who's coming against you. But what they're doing is they're looking into your life to see what's going on. They're looking for something. And it could be like an open door so that they can attack. It could be something to slip you up with. 
you know, just depends, things like that. Okay, if that is not enough information for you, just write it down again. Okay, all right. The next one says a man climbing a ladder to look at my rooftop. Again, that's really awesome. Okay, so if you know the man, that will give you some insight who it is. Like if the man is your husband in the dream, he's either going to be your, he's either representing your actual husband in life, or it could be if it's your husband, he could also represent Jesus. It depends on what his behavior is. Um, if he's climbing a ladder, and a ladder means elevation, so it's taking you up to a higher level. If they're looking at your rooftop, your rooftop, that's like the very top of your house. That's the covering. That's the thing that keeps you um, protected from the elements, from wind, rain, all of that stuff, so nothing gets down on your house, right? So what that's saying is, I'm sorry, I got distracted there with that little writing that popped up. So what that's saying is that a man, so depends on who it is, they're looking at your rooftop, they're looking at your covering. So it could be saying that the person is trying to see, you know, do you have authority because a covering is like a mantle it's like your anointing from the lord it's like that also that heavenly protection you know the familial protection whatever kind of protection it could be you know what things protect your soul like reading the bible righteousness um walking in forgiveness things like that so they're looking they're going up to a higher level because you are up there you know you're probably doing some exciting things that they may not be familiar with so they're trying to see lord is this person really from you or are they just talking on the side of their neck? Like they could be checking to see if you really have that anointing from the Lord. So that's a really good one. All right. So, okay. So it says that there, it's a lion looking in the window of a house. Okay. So that's interesting. So lions can be good or bad, which is everything. Most things in dreams can have a positive and a negative. But a lion positive is going to be Jesus. That's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And if he's looking in your window at your house, he's saying, I'm searching your soul. I want to see what's in there. And the reason the Lord searches, searches your soul is because, number one, you invited him. And that's awesome. Because if you invite him, he's going to get in there and show you, you know, this is not, doesn't line up with me. I want to clean that up. This doesn't line up with me. I want to clean up. This is wonderful. Keep working in this area. You know, this is good. This is going to bring blessing and favor into your life. Stuff like that. If it's a negative line, like they look like they want to attack you, that could either be like people in authority because the lion is the king of the jungle. That could be like somebody in authority who's, you know, trying to see what's going on with you so that they could tear you apart. You know, it could be, um, or if it's Jesus, it's going to be a positive thing. So it kind of depends on what their atmosphere is like. If they were just observing, you have to think about what was your feeling in that dream? You know, were you afraid? Were you in awe? Because when the Lion of the tribe of Judah comes, it's like you, it's one of those feelings you're just like, oh, wow. You know, like it's, it's, it's amazing because he's just like, it's awe is really what it is. Okay. All right. Um, when a person in a dream turns into a different person, ooh, that's a good one. When a person into a, it turns into a different person, it could be a couple things, of course. It always depends on, you know, a little bit more of atmosphere. But generally, so say like I'm in a dream and I turn into my mom. That's saying that I have some characteristics of her that are manifesting in my life, okay? And they could be good or bad. It depends on, like, when you're determining if a person in your dream is good or bad, you think, like, the first thing you think of when they show up in your dream, is it like, oh, no, here they come? Or is it like, ooh, I admire that person? Or, ooh, I love that person? So that's how you determine those types of things. All right, any other questions? No other questions right now, but I want to share one dream with you that I interpreted. I got this dream from somebody back in 2012, and I had a little bit of understanding when I first had the dream, but then when the Lord took me through that um, portion at the end of December 2013 when he was teaching me to see into dreams, it's like um, what like before I kind of would just read through a dream, and I had to read through it like three, four, or five times, and then I would, you know, do symbols as much as you can, and then... And then the Holy Spirit would speak something specific about the dream, and I'd be like, oh, okay, that's what it's about. But when he took me through a period of training in December, it was like you get a dream, and it's like you have super ray, x-ray vision, and you can, like, see into what things mean now. So it's really cool. It's, it's a, it was an increase in what I was able to do before, so it's awesome. And it doesn't take me as long to go through dreams anymore. 
but I received this dream in, from somebody in March 2012, and this was when I was just beginning because I just started on the Dream Team, the Billy Wong Dream Interpreter. You can find that on Facebook, the Dream Team, and I started there March 13th, 2013. So, no, I received this dream a year before, and this is one of the reasons why I only had a little bit of understanding of it because I was still going through training back in 2012. So the dream is there's a man in a car driving down the road going to get food, turns to his right and in the passenger seat is this woman and then so he's asking me you know well, what does this mean and I was saying well it basically means that you're going through life together that's what you do you know you go get food you go eat that's a part of life which in a way that is a, a little bit of what the dream is saying but then when I went through training with the Holy Spirit he was showing me, you know, like nine times out of ten, you need to go for a spiritual interpretation of a dream first. Like the um, dream that I had with, you know, when the Lord was saying, read the word, speak the word, that was pretty plain, you know. And he was standing there guiding, you know, saying, I want proof that you know my word so that you could go speak it to people. That dream was pretty self-explanatory. But the reason for that is because the Holy Spirit's witness was there explaining what it meant. So that didn't really require a lot of interpretation. Um, like I was saying, the letters were were gold. Gold, you know, that's, that's um, divine. It stands for wisdom. It stands for, you know, things of a king. God is the king of the universe. Jesus is the king of kings. Um, and the background of the banner that I saw was this deep, most beautiful royal blue color, and blue stands for divine um, revelation, okay? So that dream was pretty self-explanatory, didn't take a lot of searching. Then when I, when I learned from the Lord at the end of 2013, I looked at this dream again, because I still had it in an email, and what he was saying was, this person was being called into ministry, and the person sitting next to them that was their ministry partner. And I didn't know that, you know, when I got the dream in 2012. But after the Holy Spirit taught me, when I looked at the dream, you know, a year and a half later, I'm like, oh, it makes total sense. So the man, you know, your car stands for your ministry. And then the people who are in your car with you, they're basically who you're in ministry with. And you're going to get food. That makes complete sense because the food, the spiritual food, is the word of God. It's the things of God. That's what you feed people. And the Bible talks about that. Like everything that has to do with a dream, there's always a scripture. Like when I'm interpreting a dream or something, the Lord always puts scriptures in that verify those things that he points out in a dream. And that's how you know you're really getting an interpretation from the Lord because he always confirms his word. And one of the easiest and quickest ways to do that is to, you know, give you a scripture. Like sometimes I'll be reading through a dream and then, um, you know, the scripture will just come. And then that's saying, yes, you are correct. You're in the right direction. Okay. So I didn't get that before, but when I got, you know, when I had a little bit more training and a little bit more experience, then I saw it from the spiritual point of view. And I'm like, oh, this person was being called to ministry. And the thing is, is like, I should have been explaining to them back in March they're, that they're being called to ministry you know, and that that's their ministry partner and they're going down, you know, to go get the word of God together. And I, but I didn't have that, I didn't have that experience then. I didn't have, you know, that level of an anointing, but you learn, you know, this is what you do. You, there's no way that you can know everything there is to know about God and everything that he's saying and every way that he's speaking to you. It's always a learning process. And I want to encourage you, make sure you write down your dreams. Even if you don't seem to remember them often, Write them down as many times as you can, you know, as many days as they come because, like, you can go back a year and a half later and you'll have more experience with the Lord. You'll have more wisdom, more knowledge, and you'll be able to have more insight about the dream. And that's okay. You know, I had a dream in June of 2012 that I didn't receive understanding for until the beginning of 2013, like six months later. It's just like that sometimes. It has to do with growth, you know. But the things, like, when you're seeking after the Lord and you're in communion with him, if it's something that you need to know right then, he's going to drop it in your spirit. Go find somebody to interpret that for you so you can get what I'm saying to you. He'll do that for you. But for the most part, you know, you you just hold on to the dream and just look over it every once in a while. You'll get something new out of it. The things that the Lord speaks are so multi-layered. It's like you can always find something. And the the interesting thing is that even one person who interprets a dream, there will be some things that are going to be universal that they'll get, but other people with different experiences and different insights will see different things in your dreams. The Lord will speak different things to them in their dreams. There was an example in um, um, a dream in our forum 
a couple of weeks ago where, you know, somebody put in a dream and then everybody puts the things that they see down. And because I have a deliverance anointing and I'm always like looking for the enemy, like where is the enemy at? Like, is he trying to put a lie in the stream? Is he trying to hijack the stream? And so my help with the interpretation, of course, came from a warfare standpoint. But they're uh, like Brother Billy, he's our apostle he's our apostolic head so his dream came from you know that different portion of it different perspective of it and so you get different things but the more information you have the better you know it gives you a fuller explanation of what the lord is speaking to you do you have to have everything laid out for you no like when i'm interpreting a dream the lord like he points out what are the that basic message in there you know what is that basic message in there and that's just because i'm a minimalist you know there are some people who will give you you know symbol 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 for every line in a dream i don't do that the people who do that it's perfectly okay it's perfectly fine but i want to be sure you get those main points those hard-hitting points that are going to give you something that will change your life right now and then you go and take care of that okay i have some more comments in here so let me see cast iron pot with veggies cooking and then someone throws maggots on it okay maggots are a hindrance they are going to be a demonic spirit the cast iron pot talks about um like it kind of talks about strength but it's not as strength it's not as strong as something like silver or gold but a cast iron pot is pretty strong vegetables are good things vegetables are good for your body they're good for your soul if you knew a specific type of vegetable that kind of gives you more information because for instance like the way potatoes and carrots grow like a carrot grows down underneath and you can only see the leaves and things upside uh, uh, on them but you know potatoes they grow up in the top of the dirt and things like that and that kind of gives you a, a spiritual picture of you know do you have a surface relationship with the lord or are you digging deep you letting the lord go deep with you so those kind of things give you a little bit more information but then somebody throwing maggots on it that is you know that's basically attack an attack they're trying to destroy the good the good work the vegetables the vitamins the minerals the things that you're trying to prepare they're trying to hinder that so that's a basic interpretation of that three weasels in my rabbit cage covered them with an orange towel and locked the cage so you have to think what's a weasel a weasel is like a sneak you know you know that's somebody like think about it you would call somebody you little weasel so the 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 image that you get when you call somebody a little weasel that's telling you something and they're in a rabbit cage so uh, think about what the rabbit cage would represent the rabbit cage is going to be your protection the home for that animal what are some characteristics of rabbits and how do you feel about rabbits that's one thing that always makes a difference and then you say you cover them with an orange towel orange stands for courage it stands for bravery a towel is something that you know it can, you can wrap up in it it can keep you warm it can dry you off things like that and then you lock the cage that means that you closed it locking something that means you shut the door that's a good thing because think about it like if um, the enemy is coming after you and you lock them up and you cover them basically you have trapped them now so that they can't get out and can't do any damage to you so that's actually a positive thing that was going on weasels are not necessarily great but the thing is is that you were able to contain them that's an excellent thing actually all right let me see are dreams from Satan always in black and white? No, they're not always in black and white. Some of them are just dark, like like the lights would be off. And, you know, like I've had a dream, like, in, like think about being in a basement, like how a basement would just be dark, and then there just seems to be a little bit of light here and there. Some of them are like that. They're not all black and white. They would be just dark, and they would be specific types of fear. You know, like if you wake up from a dream and you're totally afraid, you can barely breathe. Like sometimes the Lord will give you a warning, but the warning dreams that the Lord gives you, like they send you toward correction. Like the dreams from the enemy that wake you up with fear or give you fear in the dreams, those type of things, um, it's like, you know, like you feel you know what fear feels like, but it's it's a different type of fear than what the Lord would put on you. The Lord the fear of the Lord is love to those who are his children. So it's like it would inspire you to want to change something, to want to do better. It's kind of like Holy Spirit conviction. It's not like, you know, having you worried and anxious and those types of things. 
there are dreams that like they start out in full color and then they you know the enemy hijacks the dream jumps in there and then everything changes and they become muted and things like that so you know but also you can have victory in a dream like because I've had a dream that was in black and white where the enemy was trying to put me in fear but then the Holy Spirit broke through and he was actually speaking to me in the dream and said I'm giving you victory over this do not be afraid of this go face this right now head on so even though that dream was black and white and was sent from the enemy I ended up with victory in the dream and ended up walking out of it with a promise you know of restoration from the Lord you know and actually let me think that may not have even been a dream from the enemy that actually may have been just a positive dream because what was happening in it was the Lord revealed a generational curse that was like three generations in my family that had continued and and even though it seemed like the dream because it was black and white it seemed like it was from the enemy and I was afraid I was actually running and hiding but the Lord broke through and said you know this stops now so you know you can't just say all dreams from the enemy are black and white that dream may have been from the enemy but the lord broke through you know so and it was still black and white even when he broke through the dream was still black and white but he gave victory so you never know okay let's see mixed veggies carrots green beans and corn okay so all of those things have specific and different meanings but the main point is that you want what you want to see is that you know somebody whether a demonic spirit or somebody cooperating with the enemy was basically trying to poison the vegetables and the good things that were going on in your life and I know personally that that's something that you have experienced before like people trying to speak negatively about some great things that you have going on in your life so just be aware and when the enemy does stuff like that in the dream like when you have a dream from the enemy you always want to pray the opposite so if the enemy brings in a dream like for instance when I was warring for my son back in 2012 and I hadn't seen him for so long, like every little bit, you know, probably like three times over the year, the enemy would give me a dream where somebody would call me or, or, or I would, you know, see for myself and be like, oh, Zane's dead. Okay, that's a lie. So what happens is you pray the opposite of what's going on. So when you wake up, you know, and you can get to a point where you actually are taking authority in dreams and fighting in dreams, like right there, like you tell the enemy, no, this is not from God. You get out of here now. I'm not going to participate in this dream. And you could actually end the dream and have it work out right for you. That will happen to you eventually, like once you get experienced in spiritual warfare and start paying attention to your dreams. But the, the enemy would send somebody or either I would go somewhere and be like, oh, Zane's dead. And I, then I'd get up the next morning and I'd say, no, he's not dead. And you're mad. You're trying to make me think he's dead so that I'll stop fighting for him and, and stop, you know, fighting to get him back. I do not agree with that. He is not dead. And then you immediately declare, declare God's word because that's what's going to give you the victory. Zane will live and not die and he will declare the glory of the Lord. Okay? So let's see. In a dream, we are adults as we are, but... And we comfort a child that is ourself. Oh, that's an interesting thing. Okay, so if you're in your dream, like as you are present, but then you also see yourself as a child, we all have that spiritual child inside of us. And basically that child is like, it resides in our souls now. And you're comforting that. And it's because you now have wisdom that you didn't have when you were young. Like something may have wounded you when you were young and that child is grieving over that, but you're able to comfort it now comfort yourself now so basically it's what it's saying you know how people get hurt like somebody maybe who's been this is drastic of course but been molested as a child and then you know they sometimes stop growing at that you know at that age and they still have that child that immaturity inside that wasn't able to you know get past that wasn't able to take that to the lord so that he can heal it i don't just mean get past that. i know you can't just get past that type of stuff but what what happens is that child like that age of person is still wandering around in your soul and is wounded and until the holy spirit gets in there to take care of that to to help you see you know this was from the enemy god didn't have anything to do with this you know the lord will tell you he will comfort you and hug you and say i'm sorry that this happened to you but basically that's what's happening to you when you're an adult and you see yourself as a child and you're comforting that child you're saying you know what that hurt that's causing you to cry right now i'm mature enough because of the work that the holy spirit has done in me to know that you you know you need to be comforted for that but you need to know that there's victory on top of it okay i hope that makes sense i was kind of like ah. 
all over the place with it. Anything else that you might want to ask? Let me see, excuse me here. I'm going to try to do something. Nope, I'm not sure. Well, I did bring a journal of dreams just in case because I have a ton of them. Oh, interesting dreams. Dreams that deal with the bathroom. I've had a few of these dreams over the last couple of years because they deal with flushing. What's the bathroom? It's the place where you go in and you re relieve yourself of waste. So when you have dreams about going to the bathroom, those are excellent dreams because what it's saying is the Holy Spirit has identified something in your soul that he needs to get out of there and you go to the bathroom when you use it, that's flushed, it's done and you know you don't have to deal with the toxicity of that being in your soul anymore. Those are awesome dreams, okay? I had a dream where um, I was at a place visiting someone. So I was at this person's house, right? So that means this is the Lord showing me their soul condition. And when the Lord gives you dreams about other people that you're like just observing or things like that, or you're participating with them, or whatever, dreams are always a call to prayer. But specifically when you have dreams about, you know, where they're not about you, but you are seeing something about the person. It's in a, it's a prayer assignment is what it is. So the Lord gave me a dream when I went to this person's house. So that means it's about their soul. And they're in the bathroom, the toilet's stuffed up, and they have a plunger, and they're trying to get the toilet unplugged. And then they have friends at the house, so there's, like, other people, all these people stuffed in the bathroom trying to unplug this toilet together. So what that's saying is that the Holy Spirit is working on this person. There are things that need to be flushed out of their soul so that they can walk in victory. But the toilet is plugged up. They are working on it and trying to improve themselves so that it can be flushed. But they also have other people who are trying to help them, you know, clean up as well. So that is really a good thing. Like when you have people who are coming around you willing to help you get deliverance, that is a good thing. You know, and there was no indication in the dream that those people were hindering the deliverance. They were all assisting, trying to get the toilet unplugged so that it can be flushed. Great dream. Great, great, great dream. Okay, let me look again and see anything. Do we have authority over our children's dreams? Can we ask the Lord to send them dreams from absolutely a lot? That is a wonderful question. Thank you for that. I was something that I want to tell you, and you helped me remember. A lot of the dreams that I have are, are, are like I make an appointment with the Lord and he gives me a specific dream for that. And what I mean by that is before I go to bed, a lot of times, like probably like three or four times a night, I ask the Lord a question and I ask him that because I'm expecting him to give me the answer in the dream. And he does. It's beautiful. So like one night, oh, let me answer your question first and then I'll share. Do we have authority over our children's dreams? Absolutely. You have authority over your children because that is your territory. The Lord has given it to you. That's your offspring. The enemy can't do anything to your kids. You take authority over them. You tell the enemy, you better back up off my child. This is my territory. The Lord gave it to me, and you're not going to cause any problems with them. If you want the, the child to understand something in a dream, absolutely ask the Lord, please speak to my child the best way that they will understand it. And a lot of times it is during a dream. So absolutely ask the Lord. Lord to speak to your kids. Ask the Lord to show up to your kids. Ask the Lord to reveal yourself to your kids all the time. It's so funny. Just a couple weeks ago at the beginning of February, I was watching this conference online, um, this um, spiritual growth conference online, and um, one of the things that they were praying for specific types of revelation, and I was sowing and praying. I'm like, Lord, I want you to do this for my child. I want you to wake my child up to you. I want him to be able to hear you better than ever before. And ever since then, like this past couple of weeks, he's been bumping around. Oh, the Lord showed me this, and the Lord told me this, and the Lord said this, and all kind of stuff. So you absolutely, that is your territory. You do everything according to God's will, and you make sure it manifests in your kid's life. Absolutely. So here's an example of a time I was going to bed, and this was back in probably the end of 2002, maybe the beginning of 2013. And um, I had already been starting going through deliverance. And so I asked the Lord, you know, what does my soul garden look like to you? You know, is it, does, do I still need tons of stuff? Is it getting better? Am I getting better? What do you see? And I had this beautiful vision. Sometimes you'll get a vision, like they call it the twilight hours, or it's where like you lay down and go to sleep and you're not completely sleepy, yet, but you're almost asleep. And so the Lord showed me this beautiful red farmhouse with white trim, flowers hanging on outside, a porch, and it was just 
absolutely gorgeous you know a little white um like a wicker or, or not not wicker wooden like um little table there and a rocking chair just absolutely gorgeous it's like um I don't you may not know this about me but I would love to have a country home somewhere and so it was just absolutely gorgeous beautiful deep red crimson red farmhouse and with white trim so white stands for um, holiness and purity and um, the red stands for the blood of Jesus but it also stands for godly wisdom so the and, and because I thought it was beautiful the Lord was saying your soul is beautiful to me your soul is this you know it's a it's a home of godly wisdom and purity and holiness you know like when the Lord gives you that kind of vision and stuff how encouraging that is and or gives you that kind of dream how encouraging that is because I was an idiot of idiots you know for me many many years just doing stupid stuff like look at me I got my own child taken away because of disobedience to the Lord you know so for him to say look I have worked on you and you've received what I've done in your life you you know you've gotten in agreement with me and this is what I see about you that is amazing that's encouragement and the Lord will tell you those things he'll share those things with you don't ever let anybody not person or the enemy tell you that the Lord will not speak to you in a dream, that he will not speak to you in a vision, that he will not give you every bit of information that you need to be successful in life. He will. I'm telling you, he is on your side. And even those hard things, you know, sometimes he'll say, you know what, like, again, like when I was going through the deliverance, the Lord would say to me, do you realize like you were speaking death over your life and your child's life back in 2001 and now you're paying the consequences for that you know you open the door for the enemy and never bothered to close it but and even when he's saying those hard things he's saying it you know to say this is what you did this is what you know now do better get better go for victory you know so but he will speak to you he'll tell you absolutely everything you need to know and dreams and visions are an excellent way for him to do that okay let me check again to see if we have anything else Nope, doesn't look like it. I'm going to, let me look for one more thing and then I'll let you go. I don't want to keep you on too long. Let me think, let me think. Oh, let me talk real quickly about dreams that are of the flesh and dreams that are of the Lord. Because our souls exist you know, in our spirits also, and souls are the, they're like the garden, they need work, you know, they never come into the world perfectly plowed and planted and beautiful, because we have a sin nature, and we, you know, we get all of our stuff from our ancestors, it just happens, like if they haven't closed doors, we have the evidence of it in our soul, it doesn't matter how young we are, whatever, we just may not see manifestations of it until, you know, we're out and moving and operating in life, Okay, so sometimes your soul will give you dreams. Like if you really, really want something and you haven't necessarily submitted the desire to the Lord, your soul will produce dreams, you know, to make those things come to fruition. You know, and the enemy will get into agreement and help, you know, those those dreams come and he'll also help those things manifest in life. That's why it's really important you want to be in communion with the Lord. You want to be submitted to the Lord. You want to be hearing from the Lord, responding to him, worshiping him and praising him. Okay, so you will also get dreams that come from your spirit. Your spirit man is perfect. It becomes perfect as soon as you accept Jesus. And those are the dreams that you want to pay attention to and respond to. How do you know if you're getting a fleshly dream, a soul dream, or if you're getting a dream from the Lord? Well, first of all, the dreams that the Lord gives you, you're always going to be able to find, you know, something that's pointing you either closer to Holy Spirit, closer to Jesus, closer to God. If it's a dream from the flesh, it's not going to be pointing you to the Lord. It will not be pointing you to the Lord. I'm going to give you, don't think this is raunchy, don't think it is, but this is like an easy way to explain this to you. For example, like um, sex dreams. There's intimacy sex in a dream, and then there's like flesh sex in a dream. So if you're getting those types of dreams where you're like, um, where like it's making you react in the natural to the sex in the dream that's not coming from God okay that's coming from so from the flesh or it's coming from the enemy if you have a dream where it's like the Lord is just showing you you have built a relationship with the person you know you're growing in intimacy you come into covenant with each other that's not from 
the enemy. That's from the Lord. He's just showing you, you know, intimacy is developing. And he does that like um, like when people are dating, he'll give you those types of dreams. So don't think they're bad or anything like that. There's a difference. And that's just one very obvious example of how to distinguish between a flesh dream and a God dream. Okay? There aren't any more questions, then I'm going to let you go because I don't want to keep you too long. Okay. Let's see. Why does Satan have mind access to our mind when we're sleeping? He has access to your mind anytime unless you steal it. Like, and when I say steal, I mean S T E E L. So, um, if you before you go to bed, if you say, you know, I'm unloosing the angelic host to come surround this room, sing God's praises as I'm sleeping, you know, make sure you're confessing, make sure the last thing you're doing, you're thinking about is Jesus Christ before you go to bed. The enemy's not going to be able to get in there to hijack your dreams. If you just jump into bed and go to sleep, they have free reign because you may have come in contact with somebody today that you know, pass something off to you, or you may have an open door from a thought you had today or something like that. That's what they do. The enemy plants ideas in your mind. How do you keep that out? Joshua 1, 8 tells us how to do that. You meditate on the word of God day and night. Do not let it depart from your mouth. You talk about it when you rise up, when you're going down, when you're sitting down, when you stand up. If you keep the word of God in your mouth, the enemy has less opportunity to get in there and hijack your dreams. Okay. Let's see. I think that might be it. Okay, well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. I hope I was a blessing to you in some way, shape, or form. I hope you were able to get some good insight and good information there. Um, I just want to reiterate that I believe in the Most High God, the one true God, Jehovah, Yahweh. He is only one. You know, there's no, like, New, in, new Age interpretation going on here. There's no... Um, psychological interpretation going on here none of those things point to us to what is spoken in the bible so those things don't apply to the believer's life don't get caught up in that type of interpretation it will not bring you anything it's going to lead you astray because that has to do with the antichrist so don't listen to any of that type of stuff if they can't say okay well this is coming from the bible then let me tell you so even for example like the sex dreams you know they're that how you know an intimacy dream is from the Lord because the Song of Solomon. It talks about that's all about intimacy between people who are growing in relationship together, which is a picture of our relationship with God Most High and Jesus Christ, who is, you know, our bridegroom. And the the Bible talks about that intimacy deeply in the way of sex in Song of Solomon. So you know that if God talks about us being in love with him to the point of marriage and sexual intimacy, you know he will give you a dream about sexual intimacy that's positive and not a negative. So like even that can be pointed back to the Bible. So if there's anything like somebody says, oh, let me interpret that for you, but they can't give you scripture, 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 you head, you know, you turn tail and get out of there quick because it's not going to point you in the right direction. And you don't want anything that's going to open a door to the enemy. You know, the enemy loves to get in and plant things like that all the time. Don't. You know, this is how, and you may be like totally upset, but this is how people get, you know, caught up doing crazy things because the enemy will come in and plant the idea, you know, you're not worth it. Nobody loves you. And then all of a sudden they're depressed and they're thinking about suicide and it's because of them planting ideas. We have to be savvy. You know, you don't have to walk around thinking, oh, there's a demon around any corner. That's not your focus. Your focus is Jesus, 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 Jesus. He lived on the earth to show us how to live perfectly. He sacrificed for you. He was resurrected to give you extraordinary life through God. You know, that's what you focus on. But you also keep yourself, you know, you keep yourself. The Bible tells us that, that we need to watch ourselves so that we don't end up getting deceived. Even for me, you know, the enemy would try to, he would love to speak some blasphemy about the word of God out of my mouth because I have, you know, people that I influence. But that is my responsibility to stay at the foot of Jesus so that that doesn't happen, you know. And even still, I make mistakes and end up having to repent and ask people for forgiveness and things like that. And that is all well and good, but I don't have the right to leave anybody, leave anybody astray. But that is, you know, it does, things like that do happen because the enemy wants to tear you up. He wants to steer you wrong. Let me see. Is that everything? All right. So thank you so much for participating. Again, this will be up for about 24 hours and then it will be deleted. We will do this again next week. 
um, to finish out that week of courses also. So, you know, grab those things, make notes or whatever, and then we'll try this again next week. And also, don't forget, guys, let me know what would be a good time for you because I want as many people to be able to participate as possible. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for allowing me to share with you. Um, thank you for your patience. I am not great on video, but just the fact that you would join in with me is, you know, that's encouragement for me and helps me keep going and keep talking about Jesus because that's what I love. All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I decree God dreams and God interpretations for you. I decree that the enemy has to flee. He has to leave you alone because you belong to the most high God and that you will receive his dreams. You will respond to him and you will walk in victory for everything that he shows you.